Russell presented an uncommon and unexpected challenge to Lewis Hamilton in 2018, and it appears the trend will continue in the 2023 season. However, new information suggests that perhaps Hamilton is doing this on purpose, giving Russell reason to hope before cruelly taking it from him, the moment he gets the right car on his hands. Is it possible that Mercedes' pecking order will shift away from Russell and back towards the old Fox once the seven-time world champion finally gets his hands on some respectable machinery? Let's see Hamilton's cunning plan to break down Russell for the foreseeable future and create a perfect storm. Russell joined Mercedes last year, which was a bad year for the team, as they struggled to get the most out of the W13. When Hamilton and Russell took to the track in the W14 for the first race of the season, Hamilton was quick to apply that etiquette to this season's challenger, despite the team having previously dubbed the W13 as one of the worst to come out of production at Brackley. The British driver looks to be acting in a malicious fashion, and if there's one thing Hamilton excels at, it's defeating his teammates. The younger Briton, Russell, has shown to be a tough nut to crack for the seven-time world champion so far, having finished 35 points ahead of him in the 2022 campaign. Even more so, Mercedes was greatly betting on Russell to produce the results because he was the only driver to earn pole position and a race victory during the team's troubled season. In addition to his many responsibilities at Mercedes in terms of car development and trackside operations, Russell also serves as president of the Grand Prix Drivers Association GPDA. During his time at Williams, he has been tasked with this responsibility, and we must say that he has done a fantastic job of fulfilling it. While his outspoken criticism of the FIA's rulings can come across as arrogant at times, the younger Briton is actually advocating for his and his team's best interests. But Hamilton may be trying to leverage this to his advantage, and you've surely also observed that whenever a question is posed to both Mercedes drivers, Hamilton is happy to let Russell answer. You might be wondering why a seven-time world champion would give a driver in his second year with the team the opportunity to be the team's spokesman. Tom Clarkson, however, claims that everything is part of a grand design, explaining that, in the press conference in Australia, after qualifying, they'd qualified second and third in Melbourne. Max, of course, on pole. And every time a question was posted to both the Mercedes drivers, Lewis was quite happy for George to answer the question. He almost became the spokesperson for the team in that press conference. And I was interested as to why Lewis was happy to just sit back and let that happen. I don't know whether he's sort of keeping his powder dry. Is he trying to sort of give him a sort of false hope of being the dominant person, and then he's going to really hit him hard where it matters most in the stopwatch later on? I don't know what his thought process was. But it was interesting anyway to observe that he very much let George be the man. One thing we could say with absolute certainty about Hamilton is that he never allows anyone to take on the role of the man or alpha male on the squad. Alonso, a two-time world champion, was his opponent in the first season with McLaren, and he never backed down, and in 2016, he engaged in a fierce battle against Rosberg, his longtime childhood friend and rival, and although he lost that battle, he won the previous two against the guy, who retired right after winning his one and only championship. This led us to wonder why Russell is getting good outcomes and shouldering all of the team's responsibility while Hamilton is giving up so easy as keeping a level head would be the simplest solution. Ask Botas or Rosberg about the cost they paid to compete with Hamilton in Formula 1, and you'll have an idea of how much energy the sport requires. Russell has a lot on his plate, including serving as president of the GPDA and consistently outperforming Hamilton in practice and qualifying throughout the course of the last year and continuing into 2023. Thinking about it, Russell's mind might not be the healthiest place if he keeps up this pace, since it requires a lot of mental effort and can totally break you down. Yes, he is young and has a lot of resilience at the moment, and he also drives for one of the most successful teams in F1 history and faces a seven-time world winner. However, inspiration and drive are not the same thing and 1996 Formula One World Championship Damon Hill agrees that Hamilton's political games are all part of a master plan, as he elaborates, We drivers are competitive, and we are kind of political as well. You have to be aware of rising forces or rising empires within the team. 
George has made himself a valued asset of the team. And he's obviously doing that really well. But at the same time, he's the one that has to do all the hard work. I think Lewis doesn't have to. Mercedes knows what they've got with Lewis, and they know that given half a sniff of a chance, he's going to be back on top form and can deliver those extraordinary races. They know that George can do that too. But he has yet to prove all that. George is also the director of the GPDA, so he's got a big workload. George, he's taken on quite a lot. But I don't think Lewis's strategy has always been to remove as many distractions as possible and leave time for downtime and clarity. For one major reason, the situation with Russell is different from the last two opponents we mentioned that Hamilton went against and didn't even want to display aggression when it was needed to be shown, and that is that Mercedes simply isn't a championship squad right now. To be completely honest, they lack the resources to consistently win races and challenge teams like Red Bull. So Hamilton's strategy to wear and tear Russell down before Mercedes can actually score huge wins may go down as one of the smartest things ever accomplished in Formula 1. Though Russell has yet to even come close to what Hamilton has accomplished, we can rest assured that he will not go down without a fight. Wolf has forewarned us of this, saying that the mutual respect between the two British drivers is due to their fierce competition for position 5 and 6, while Rosberg warned Russell last year that Hamilton would be devastated to lose to a teammate. Upon Hamilton's retirement, the Brackley-based Mercedes team will undoubtedly transition to a driver of Russell's caliber, as he has the possibility to take the helm in the next couple of years. We'd love to see Hamilton follow in Alonso's footsteps and race until he's in his mid-40s, but the seven-time world champion has made it clear that he has no interest in continuing to do so after turning 40. Russell should proceed with caution until he proves himself in Mercedes, because even though he has been posting above-average results in a car that isn't quite dialed in, he still has work to do before he can challenge Hamilton to the driver's title once the W14 or the 2024 car reaches its full potential. Keep in mind that one of the reasons Russell is succeeding with Mercedes is that he has been driving a poor car for the past three years with Williams. Granted, Mercedes is in no way comparable to Williams, but the previous year was one in which the team had to drive with a troublesome car, which suited Russell more than it did Hamilton. As far as we can tell, Damon Hill's interpretation of this facet of the Hamilton-Russell dynamic is spot on. To attribute this to anything other than Hamilton's desire to remain silent for as much of the press conference as possible is a stretch, because most, if not all, drivers would have preferred not to be giving news conferences and instead be doing something else. Those hoping for a rematch between Hamilton and Rosberg will be disappointed, as there is currently no title at stake in Mercedes. When Hamilton attributed George Russell's P4 and Jetta to luck with the setup route he used, Russell firmly disagreed, and tensions between the two flared briefly. The media will be scouring the sport for the tiniest of distractions this year in an effort to make up for Red Bull's dominance on the sport, and you can certainly expect that everyone will be paying close attention to every single second of Hamilton versus Russell. What do you think? What will result of this Hamilton plan? Can it be detrimental to the team's chances of winning, or will this only motivate Russell to improve even further? Let us know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below, and see you next time!